Hi, Black from Football Biz at Kudu K, and today we're doing a quick video comparison on the new EvoSpeed 1.4 range. The EvoSpeed 1.4 SL, the standard EvoSpeed 1.4, and the EvoSpeed 1.4 Leather. Now, the new EvoSpeed 1.4 SL is the headline range and will be worn by the professionals. All three boots were launched in May 2015. So the new EvoSpeed SL is only available in this firm ground edition. Today we have the camo version, the first ever EvoSpeed 1.4 SL. The Ever standard EvoSpeed 1.4 is available in firm ground, soft ground and artificial ground, which we have here today. We have the launch red and white edition. And the EvoSpeed 1.4 leather is only available in this firm ground edition. We have the new blue white colorway. So in terms of what they're designed for, the EvoSpeed range is a speed range and expect wingers, strikers and wingbacks to headline the range. The likes of Radamal Falcao, Sergio Aguero, Marco Royce, Antoine Griezmann, Santa Gazzola, Marco Verratti, Hector Bellerin and Adam Lallana will headline the 1.4 SL range in either this colorway or the new blue-white colorway. So yeah, it's a speed range designed for one thing, speed. They're all lightweight, all have their different sort of Features. This is why I'm going over the range to provide you with a really good comparison between the three new ranges. So in terms of tech specs, now the EvoSpeed 1.4 SL has a super thin and lightweight textile upper which is arguably the lightest material on the market. Makes the boot very, very lightweight. The standard EvoSpeed 1.4 has a soft and thin microfiber upper it's sort of similar to what you'd see on previous Evo Speeds, such as the Evo Speed 1.3 and 1.2 editions. It's not too thin, but it's not too thick. It's pretty much what you want of a synthetic upper. Now the Evo Speed 1.4 leather obviously has leather. It's a full grain leather. It's not K leather, and it's just featured on the forefoot and striking region. So the leather edition, yes, it will have it will provide a bit, bit more of a natural touch compared to the other two Evo Speeds. So speed frame is the new cage system that I've applied in all three boots. The EvoSpeed 1.4 SL has speed frame throughout the entire boot. It's a sort of internal cage system. I don't know if you can see it there. We've done an unboxing on this. You would have seen that then. But it's just to give the uh, super thin textile upper a bit of structure. It's featured throughout the entire upper. Doesn't really make it thick or a bit more protective. It's just to help with the structure of the lightweight material. Speed frame on the standard Evo Speed. You can see it on the medial side of the boot, but you can see it's sort of this webbing pattern on this mesh material, and it's also featured on the striking region in that sort of webbing pattern too. And it's, yeah, it's just gonna give this synthetic a bit more structure, a bit better for protection, and yeah, it's a lot better for durability too. And yes, the speed frame is on this EvoSpeed 1.4 leather, but not as much as it's seen on the Evo standard EvoSpeed. It's the same system is used on the leather edition on the midfoot and on the heel region, but on the leather material, it's just leather, leather and stitching. There's no speed frame on the leather material. So yes, the speed frame just locks your foot in place, gives a bit of structure to the the synthetic materials and leather materials and that's pretty much what it does. In terms of sole plates, the EvoSpeed 1.4 SL has speed track spines. So these two spines that come up here, the lightweight is very flexible. It's so so thin and lightweight. It's what's the reason why it's so lightweight. There's a sole plate and the upper are just so thin. But these speed track spine bars will just give a bit of structure to it. External heel counter. On the AG edition of the standard EvoSpeed, it does have speed track and it does have Duroflex. And it's going to provide a really even distribution of stud pressure on artificial ground surfaces. Speed track system there too. So, this is the standard EvoSpeed sole plate. You saw this in the EvoSpeed 1.2, the EvoSpeed 1.3. Speed track, really strong spine bar, and Duroflex just to provide a bit of uh, flexibility in the forefoot but stability in the heel and midfoot. It's a solid sole plate design. They've used this for two Evo speeds, three Evo speeds now, so it yeah, it works. If it's not broken, don't fix it. So grip techs. This is something which was seen on previous Evo speeds, 
but that standard Everspeed is the only boot that claims to have it. Riptex is a sort of application on top of the synthetic just to help for a consistent touch in all weather conditions. So it's only featured on this boot. Personally, I don't think Griptex actually does anything to helping controlling and touching the ball. It's just my opinion though. In terms of weight, this is where these boots differ a lot. As you may be aware, the Everspeed 1.4 SL is the lightest boot on the market. It's 103 grams. You have to save these for your best games. They're only going to last you 10 games, but professionals can wear them because they pretty much get a new boot every game. So this is 103 grams. It's ridiculously lightweight. It's about 50 to 60 grams lighter than any other speed boot on the market. You've got like the Velocita and other speed boots which are around the 150 to 200 gram mark. Now the standard Evo Speed 1.4 weighs 215 grams. So that doesn't really make sense because it is a speed boot. It's still called Evo Speed. Speed boots are essentially should be under 200 grams. But this weighs 215 grams and this is the AG version so it's probably going to weigh around 220 to 230 grams so it is quite a heavy speed boot. Adidas's new X15 weighs about the same as that and it's not really a speed boot they've classified that as more of a game changing boot a player that causes chaos. And the Evo Speed Leather is actually in between it's 200 grams so I feel like this is a the perfect weight you should have it's one of the this makes it one of the lightest leather boots on the market so yeah weights a big difference between the three boots in terms of lasts they all fit narrow they've all got three different sole plates like I showed you the camo edition will fit narrow the standard Evo speed will fit narrow and the either speed leather will fit narrow too the leather edition is probably the best boot if you have wide feet so if it came down to it and I had to choose one of the three new Everspeed boots, I definitely wouldn't pick the Everspeed 1.4 SL. It's too lightweight, it's too thin, no protection, no durability, it's almost a pointless product. Only professionals can get any benefit out of this. And if you're a really speedy winger, I can see it being a benef beneficial for you, but overall it's just a waste of time and money in my eyes. The standard Everspeed is probably the second best boot out of the three. It's really, uh, the, um, the synthetic is protective, solid, it's quite a solid and comfortable speed boot. It's one of the most comfortable Evo Speed 1.4s out there. And this is the boot I'd go for, the Evo Speed Leather, because I'm a big fan of leather football boots. And when you incorporate leather into speed boots, it's always a good thing. They've never ever been worn by uh, professionals, but I feel like this is the best product of the three, because the leather will expand and mold to your feet over time. It's not too heavy, it's lighter than the standard Evo Speed, and I just feel like that's the best product of the three. Please leave a comment below with what boot you would choose out of the three. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you next time.